Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is the Polloin Total and today we're going to be covering another enlisted weapon. This weapon today is going to be the MG42, the Buzzsaw. This is a German heavy machine gun enlisted and this video will be covering the weapon and how you should use it in enlisted. So let's get started. But before you start, I would like to say that this video has been only been possible through the friends and Discord and Facebook. So meaning that if you haven't liked, subscribed or joined the Discord or Facebook, I highly suggest that you like, subscribe and join the Discord or Facebook. But that said, let's get started with the MG42. The development of the MG42 was by Metal and Lackenschuk Fiber, Johannes Vogelben, a company mostly used for making steel metal lanterns and resulted from further attempts at improving at the MG34, particularly in making it easier to mass produce. The initial designs were short recoil systems like the MG34, but the bolt locking system was designed originally patient by Edward Stika of Poland. A limited run about 1,500 were its immediate predecessor, the MG3441, which had been completed in 1941, and tested in combat trials. It was officially accepted and maintained manufacturing of the production design, which began in 1942. Contracts went to Mauser, Gofschuk, Weibund, and other production during the war, which amounted to 400,000 or 17,915 units in 1941, 1,116 thousand in 1943, 2100 thousand in 1944, and 61 thousand in 1945, and these were produced in roughly half the number of man hours in than the MG-34, using much less metal in the process. One of the method's most notable feature was the comparatively high cyclical rate, about 1,000 rounds per minute, which is much faster than the British Vickers machine gun, which is 1,600 rounds per minute, although it was noted that, that the Vickers had a much superior range, power, and accuracy being in a heavy machine gun. At such a high rate, the human ear cannot easily discern the sound of the individual bullets being fired, and it was described as ripping a piece of cloth, or giving the nickname of Hitler's buzzsaw, or more coarsely, Hitler's zipper. Soviet soldiers call it the Lorman Ripper, and the German soldiers call it Hitler's saw, or bone saw, or as it preferred as the electric machine gun. The gun was sometimes called the Spandau by British troops for the manufacturer's place, noting the district of Berlin where some of the weapons were produced. It was also among British troops as the Coco Terror, which due to its distinctive sound. In terms of the weapon characteristics, the resulting MG-34 designated as MG-42, which was adopted in 1942, remained largely similar to the earlier MG-34, which was a deliberate decision in order to maintain similarity. The only major change from the gunner's perspective is the drop feeding option, leaving it to loose ammo belts only, and further increased the rate of fire, which made it relatively cheap and the prototype also served to be considerably more rugged and resistant to jamming than the somewhat temperamental MG-34. The MG-42 weighed 11.6 kilometers in the light row with a bipod lighter than the MG-34 and more portable. The bipod on this one the bipod, the same one used on the MG-34, can be mounted to the front or the center of the gun depending on where it was used. For sustained fire, it was matched to the newly developed Lafay 42 tripod, which was weighted 620. 0.5 kilometers on its own, and the barrel was much lighter than the MQ-34, and although it heated more quickly. That said, it could be re replaced in seconds by an experienced gunner. Due to its relatively high rate of fire, the trigger was designed to terminate the possibility of slowly releasing the trigger and having more bolts assembly slam into a partially raised sear, and the high energy of the tricostal mass will severely damage the shear in the process custom potentially causing the shear to incapable to stop the bolt, resulting in a runaway gun. When the trigger is pulled back, the rear tab on the trigger pushes to the front, and the shear rotates to, so the noise drops at the same rate the gun fires. When the shear nose is significantly lower to release the bolts, and then the trigger is then released, and the back of the trigger drops to the front, but lifts and rises and the lifter catches the front to the shear and drops it down. As the trigger continues during the same process, the bolt then strikes the liver, it pivots and then turns the trigger and releases the front of the sear and the shear under the action of its gun. Basically, this is the basic fire mechanism of the MG42, which has basically allowed the MG42 to fire faster while not experiencing that much recoil. That said, the considerable recoil can cause a shock to creep from its intended position if the weapon is not properly seated on the shoulder or properly clamped down. And that is all for characteristics of the MG42, let's move on to statistics. In terms of statistics for the MG42, the 2-star MG42 has a 7.92mm in caliber, hit power of 12 uh, with, with a damage over 
damage reduction over distance of 12 at 10 meters, 10.8 at 100 meters, 9.6 at 300 meters, 8.4 at 400 meters, 3.6 at 600 meters, 1.2 at 1000, and 0.1 at 1500. Armor penetration is basically the same for every weapon, and muzzle velocity is 750 rounds per second. Rate of fire is 820 to 900 shots per minute. Reload time is 6.6. .6, vertical recoil of 15. Horizontal of 16. Fed system of 50 round magazine. Weight of 10.10 kilometers. And cartridge mass of 26.2. In terms of a 5 star MG42, the weapon is still at a 7.92 caliber. Hit power has been increased for 13.2, of which 13.2 at 10 meters, 11.4 at 100, 10.6 at 300, 4.2. 9.2 at 400, 4 at 600, 1.3 at 1000, 0.1 at 1500, and armor penetration is basically still the same. Muzzle velocity is 750 rounds per second, 900 to 990 shots per minute at a 5 star, recoil time of 5.6, vertical recoil 15, horizontal 16, 50 round magazine, weight of 10, and the cartridge mass is still at 2.6. And that is all it for the stat, let's move on to the recap section. In my mind, the MG42 does way better than the MG34. The first thing is that the MG42 is way better in terms of accuracy. Um, the gun can easily get on target. It doesn't tend to move around much when firing, although when you're firing this weapon, you really do need to make sure that the weapon is only fired in burst rounds. After firing the, the first few bursts or first few clicks, you will basically find yourself the gun will be pretty much unstable at, after that point, but it is more stable than the MG34. In all reality, the MG42 can easily just kill people with a burst. And when I mean a burst, I mean a tap with your mouse or PlayStation. The MG42 can basically just tap a person, and once you tap a person, it's basically three rounds being fired, and you wouldn't even notice, considering the fact there have been multiple times in which I tapped a person and that was already eight rounds gone. And that raises the other biggest issue of the MG42. The biggest issue of the MG42 is not the weapon handling, it is actually the reload. Everything else is fine, just the reload rate of the MG42 is going to be a pain. The MG42 at 50 rounds, is, which is going to be extremely fast, the 50 round magazine is going to be fired extremely quickly. It's not going to have a lot, but the the reload rate is going to be the biggest problem, considering the fact that it takes too long to reload. Um, those six seconds that you have to reload your gun is going to be extremely painful, especially if you have hordes of enemies coming upon your position. The MG34 does a way better in the situation of reload, and that is why, sadly, I do have to prioritize sometimes the MG34 or the MG42. It is just, I'd rather have sustainability than a better fire rate. But that said, this is the MG4 or D2 for you. It is extremely usable, it is extremely deadly, way deadlier than the MG34 in my opinion, but the biggest problem is the reload rate. That is all it for the MG42, and I believe this is the end of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, join the Discord and Facebook, and I'll see you in the next one. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.